Machu Picchu, unquestionably one of the most recognizable ancient ruins on Earth. It is a place that is found high on countless astute explorers' bucket lists, and for good reason. Placed far away from modern civilization, requiring a 10-hour trek along the Inca Trail to reach. However, when one arrives at the site, they are rewarded with an astonishing array of ancient feats of engineering. There are many anomalous characteristics of this pre-Incan site, which although ignored by academia, we intend to explore here on our channel. One of these peculiar and as yet unexplained features is the Temple of Three Windows. Located west of the main square, this sacred temple, formed with the use of gigantic megalithic blocks, is adorned with three still-existing trapezoidal-shaped windows, aligned with the path of the sun, allowing its rays to pass through them at differing times of the day, brightly illuminating the sacred plaza beyond. It is one of the many inexplicable features of Machu Picchu, and indeed pre-Incan Peru, which laughs in the face of currently attested academic theory and its attempts to explain how such sites were initially built. Most funded archaeologists claim Machu Picchu was constructed as an estate for an Incan emperor known as Pachacuti between 1438 to 1472. However, we disagree with this claim, due to the exquisite nature of the site's construction, the clearly advanced levels of architecture specifically, but not exclusively, pertaining to its complex irrigation, sanitation, and drainage systems, and indeed, the precision displayed with the use of such enormous multi-ton stones. These ancient megaliths were not only somehow carried to the tops of these mountaintop fortresses, but as the temple of the three windows clearly displays, masterfully cut to form the windows accomplishing such a refined finish to their surfaces that to claim they were chiseled out using primitive tools, we find not to be a viable or indeed logical conjecture. It is clear to us that whoever created this remarkable temple had at their disposal not only advanced highly capable transport systems, but stone-cutting tools far out of the reach of the academically claimed constructors. Furthermore, Present upon the stones of the Temple of Three Windows, also visible throughout ancient Peru, are enigmatic marks left by a tool that we, the public, are yet to be informed of. Intriguingly, these marks are not only visible upon the stones within Peru, but are also in abundance at the ancient quarry within Aswan. We have in the past covered the pink granite columns found within the ancient temples of Baalbek, transported from the same quarry to Baalbek, a distance of over 1,000 miles. These columns, we hypothesize, link the temple to the ancient pyramids, and these enigmatic stone-cut marks, present at Machu Picchu, we assert, connect all three. We believe that as more detailed alternative research is undertaken upon these sites, the connections between them, or more specifically, the true creators of said sites, will become apparent as the same. Both religious and evolution theories, in their current forms, stifle this truth by their very nature. Yet, thankfully, as more and more curious individuals relinquish themselves of the rigid and conformist chains of ideologies in favor of a pursuit of the truths of our Earth, the reality of history will inevitably be unraveled. Who built the Temple of Three Windows? How did they construct such an astonishing site, built with such aligned precision, with such enormous stones? It is undoubtedly highly compelling. We have in the past covered countless ancient anomalies found amongst the many ruins of ancient Peru. Hillside fortresses, mountaintop sanctuaries, completely self-sustaining, technologically advanced group whose ruins still contain countless as yet unexplained methods of construction and often incorporating inexplicably large megalithic blocks once quarried, carved, transported, and then somehow seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another. Masters of architecture, irrigation, stonework and horticulture, 
This group, although claimed to have been that of our far less capable recent ancestors, the Incas, built self-sustaining, earthquake-proof settlements high among the clouds. Sites often built at altitudes far higher than 2,000 meters above sea level. With these ancient, once indigenous builders, also one installing simple yet incredibly effective gaps in the pathways to such sites as Machu Picchu, allowing the inhabitants to draw the bridges to the site, cutting it off from any possible invaders. Once these bridges were removed, sites such as Machu Picchu became virtually impenetrable. We have previously covered many incredible Peruvian ruins. The Intihuatan, for example, is yet another relic we recently covered here on the channel. It is yet another example of this now lost civilization's past knowledge and extraordinary now lost capabilities. A solar clock, precisely bored into being, directly out of the bedrock of Earth, which precisely indicates the solstices. We discussed how certain characteristics of many ancient sites, most notably the apparent Mayans masonry, Incan, and Neolithic sites, such as the Stonehenge within the UK, all display a past obsession with solar precisions. Furthermore, the constructors of these sites all displayed an uncanny urge in particular and undoubtedly most prominently at the site of Machu Picchu to undergo a mammoth undertaking, to create what now appears to have merely been a quirk of engineering, entwined within the architectural planning of Machu Picchu itself. It is often perceived as overkill, so much polygonal masonry is present virtually everywhere it could be laid. Perhaps these efforts of stoning up literally every crevasse at the site, regardless of whether it would be on public display or not, may have merely been due to a purely aesthetic obsession by a once highly capable, now lost civilization. One who must have perceived such, as yet unexplained tasks, as child's play. The incorporation of natural geological features into the sites is yet another curious characteristic of Machu Picchu, which many individuals who visit the location are perplexed by. It would appear that the ancient civilization responsible for this incredible site's existence, like a number of the other sites we have covered previously, incorporated the living rock of the mountains into the construction plans of their past sanctuaries. Rather than have simply carved them flat, many ruins display a collaboration of such natural stones into the buildings themselves. The Temple of the Condor is one of these incredible examples. A natural rock formation which was formed millions of years ago, was spared destruction and was incorporated into the building of the site, subsequently becoming a place of worship. Many believe the temple was a pilgrimage of religious worship. The masons who manipulated the Temple of the Condor into the site skillfully shaped the rocks below the main menhir into the shape of outspread wings, of a bird largely believed to be that of a depiction of a condor in flight. According to a number of studies of the ruin, upon the floor of the temple is the carving of the condor's head and neck feathers, flowing up into the body, which is the natural formation we still see today. This completes the posited figure of the three-dimensional bird. The temple of the condor is undoubtedly one of the most spectacular examples of what these so-called pre-Incas were once capable of. Like so many other ancient sites found all over the world, share so many characteristics with ancient Peru. The question is why did the builders of all these sites go to such great efforts not to displace or even incorporate seemingly common rocks into the build of the sanctuaries? Who were the builders of Machu Picchu? Were they a world-faring civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We recently covered the enigmatic ancient civilization that could once be found among the tops of the mountains within northern Peru. Known as the Chachapoyas, or Cloud People, they were a race of possible ancient giants that are said to have been responsible for some of the most precariously positioned and most amazingly constructed ancient builds to be found anywhere on Earth, let alone Peru. And the most astonishing of these has to be the ancient site known as Kulap. Kulap is a little academically shared, thus little known ancient Peruvian site, 
located within the Peruvian mountains, near the towns of Maria and Tingo, in the southern part of the region of Amazonas. According to particularly funded parties, it was built by the Chachapoyas culture a mere 1400 years ago, on a ridge overlooking the Utcubamba Valley. However, once one has an opportunity to visually explore this untouched, once lost ruin, the unexplainable extent of the groundwork that went into creating the site becomes apparent. What first appears to be long brick-walled fortifications are soon realized to actually be enormous, seemingly unimaginably huge groundworks built by brick, creating multimeter reinforced walls, backfilled and leveled with earth, creating a ruin which is now what can only be seen as man-made geology. Groundworks the size of no other anywhere on Earth, created apparently quite recently within history without any real record of the astonishing event, or more importantly, cataloging of the methods used found anywhere among the sites. The city has three entrances, two to the east and the other one to the west. The main entrance has a trapezoid shape, having once also having a corbel arch. This entrance was siege-proof due to its cunning shape. It becomes narrower and narrower until it allows the passage of only one person at a time. Astonishing architecture, built with precision into enormous constructions. There are over 550 structures within the fort, nearly all of which having once been circular. On the southwestern part of the settlement, there is a 5.5 meters high structure known as El Tentero, or Templo Mayor, Spanish for main temple. Ceremonial archaeological remains have been found at this location, and it is hypothesized that the building may have been used as a solar observatory. Kulap was accidentally rediscovered in 1843 by Juan Crisostomo Nieto, a judge from the city of Chachapoyas. In 1870, Antonio Reamonde made the first known survey of the site. Ever since, details regarding the site have slowly been revealed. Astonishing ruins. A place like many others around the globe, which also display seemingly impossible feats of engineering, accompanied by complete lack of any recording or explanation for said tasks, undoubtedly predates its academic dating. The question is, who could have built such astonishing architecture atop the largest groundworks anywhere on Earth? How did they complete such a mammoth task at such a high altitude? Perhaps one day we will find out. Although many academic bodies and the individuals funded by said institutions are only allowed to attribute ancient ruins to known heavily researched past civilizations, there exist many features within these sites, found all over the world, which tell a very different story. Not only are they indicative of an ancient civilization far more capable than our well-studied more recent ancestors, but many of them share features within their builds, with many other sites who are separately claimed by the as-mentioned institutions as the work of completely different past civilizations who we feel are far more likely, based on said evidence, to have been mere re-inhabitants of these sites, which allowed these civilizations to flourish, adopting said features into their own cultures, and often claiming said works as their own to outside groups. Not only do the similarities show an undeniable connection with sites currently argued as completely isolated ancient works of architecture, but many of the most astonishing features of said sites are not only ignored, but often overlooked by the world as a result, which we also feel is strong evidence of not only a deliberate attempt to ignore the facts in favor of fallacy, but clear proof of a conspiracy which is largely funded in an effort to keep these particular proverbial smoking guns hidden and under wraps often avoiding further study as a result, this clearly due to the reality they contain regarding facts about the history of man, which academia is not only responsible for hiding in favor of funding, but are responsible for hiding the true history of man from man himself, 
in an effort to merely appear all-knowing in the face of things they currently have no explanation for. And the so-called Inca Road is indeed one of these said ancient anomalies, which is of an astonishing size. It is so big, in fact, it even dwarfs the Great Wall of China. An ancient relic so big, it can be seen from space. One might ask, how can I not have been informed of such an ancient relic? But once one realizes the current academically baffling accomplishment this so-called Inca masterpiece must have once been, the conspiracy to keep such a site largely unknown will become clear. It is a road system that not only links nearly every unexplained ancient ruin currently known to exist within Peru, connecting Puma Punca, Sacsayhuaman, Machu Picchu, Olante Tambo, along with many others. It in fact covers an incredible 25,000 miles, topping the Chinese wall by nearly 7,000 miles, going all the way through Peru, Chile, and spreading out far beyond, with bridges, tunnels seemingly carved straight through cliff faces, and even following sheer drops, once cut horizontally into near vertical rock faces, with plunging sides dropping at times thousands of meters to valleys below. We strongly believe that although the road has clearly been utilized by an unimaginably large number of travelers and has been severely eroded away nearly everywhere, the method of construction now hidden by erosion, that this surface, just like that of the roads of Pompeii, were actually formed using a now lost stone technique, now largely known as that of polygonal masonry. Not only a lost, now unexplained technique of stone building, indicative of a lost civilization and technologies, but the sheer size of the road and the features accomplished along its incredible length still provides countless unexplained features, which cannot be explained as Inca. Yet not only is it and its features academically ignored, but we feel the proposition of it being an Inca relic just like all the ancient sites we have already covered in which it connects, are far too advanced to be claimed as Incan. How can one claim that such a relic was built by our more recent ancient ancestors, when not only does this site link much of ancient Peru and is largely ignored, but not only the road but all said sites currently hold feats of ancient engineering which cannot be explained? It is clearly a feature that is indicative of a far more advanced, far more ancient civilization, which once constructed this road and the sites found along it, merely re-inhabited by our now well-studied far more recent ancient ancestors. It is a place we find highly compelling. There are many ancient ruins that were not only beyond the capabilities of the claimed creators, but we postulate were simply re-inhabited allowing the far more primitive and we feel far more recent inhabitants to flourish, developing these sanctuaries, often heavily fortified temples, to a point where they were able to leave their own mark upon these locations. An archaeological legacy left after the original creators of said sites were seemingly wiped out, with their own archaeological legacies simply washed away by the seas of our planet. These remnants have allowed academia to simply disregard the feat of engineering such incredibly large sites would have required, pinning such efforts to a more suitable candidate. After researching many such sites, backed up by the megalithic accomplishments that they still possess, one will begin to notice a pattern, an illogical and contradictory history for these groups, often invaded by a similarly capable and heavily studied group. The question is, why were a group who were apparently capable of building such a site so easily dominated by another which existed at the same era of history? One would have imagined that if they were indeed the builders of said sites, that they would have also been able to have created substantial defense systems, yet these are invariably absent from nearly all of these sites, with just the weather-resistant megaliths and indeed the condition of the sites most probably very similar to how they are found today. And Chan Chan is no exception. Believed to have been constructed around 850 AD, based on archaeological finds, 
subsequently claimed as having been constructed by the Chimu. Although this explanation for the enormous site is conveniently absent any explanation as to how this society achieved such incredible feats of ancient engineering. It became the Chamur Empire's capital city, with an estimated population of 40 to 60,000 people when invaded by the Inca. After the Inca captured the Chamu around 1470 AD, Chan Chan was abandoned and by 1535 AD again became a ruin of history. Surviving into modern day and beyond, while no longer a teeming capital city, Chan Chan was still well known for its great riches and was consequently looted by the Spanish treasure hunters. With an indication of the creator's wealth seen in a 16th century list of items looted from a burial tomb, a treasure equivalent to 80,000 pesos of gold was recovered, nearly 5 million US dollars in gold. Incredibly intricate stone-cut engravings rest alongside massive fortified walls, and there is most likely many other tombs in the site, which not only predate this later re-inhabitation, but are probably also filled to the rafters with gold, an expression of these original creators' power, and again, contradictory to the Chamu's claim to such a site. Furthermore, Chan Chan is in a particularly arid section of the coastal desert of northern Peru, and due to the lack of rain in this area, the major source of non-salted water was in the form of rivers carrying surface runoff from the Andes. This runoff allowed for the control of land and water through irrigation systems. The city of Chan Chan spanned 20 square kilometers and had a dense urban center of 6 square kilometers. This contained extravagant ciudadelas, ciudadelas being the large architectural masterpieces which house plazas, storerooms, and burial platforms for the royals. Who were the original builders of Chan Chan? Were they, like we postulate, wiped out during a disaster? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling.